So just increasing the moisture content. Let's um, mix this up and make sure you just, yeah, get way down at the bottom of it. So if you want to put the flat in here, it's kind of, it's hard to know just how hard you're pressing down, cause, but I can kind of see how far the soil is going down in the cell. And then I try and get of all the soil because one thing we are short sure on and one thing that is very expensive is the potting mix. You never forget to label anything because you have no idea what it is. I mean, you can maybe dig out a seed and find it out. And what we're going to do is write the variety on top and always go from this side to that side because we're going to put it in here. And if you go from this side to that side, then you'll start to bury the stick. Um, we make them with our fingers right now. And the thing you want to do is be consistent. If you have some that are deep and some that are shallow, you'll have different rates of germinate or the, the thing popping out above the top of the soil. And you really want everything to be about the same because if you're transplanting, some things are this big and some things are this big. And then it's just better if everything can be more consistent. Um, so you don't want to plant things that are too small and may not even That's make it. Oh, okay. In general, when sowing seed, the larger the seed, the deeper you can go. Probably. The smaller the seed, the more shallow. I mean, that makes sense, right? Because mm -hmm. each seed has um, enough uh, reserves in its seed to help it germinate and grow for a period of time in its roots before it starts sprouting above ground. And um, if it has to push through too much soil, then it may lose its vigor before it even breaks the surface. So we want to create little templates that are like a half inch deep. Like I said, try and be as consistent as possible. This, this is 11 95% germ rate. I'm going to hope that, because we don't have a ton of this seed, I'm going to hope that one seed does it, one seed per cell. So basically you just take one of these and drop in each cell. And if you get two per cell, it, don't worry. If you start to get more than two, then um, refine your technique or try and pick one out, but they're really tiny and you'll find that you just kind of often bury it even deeper. Some plants produce a big plant and you only want one plant per cell to be growing because it'll use up the fertility in the cell and also because um, it'll use the fertility up in the ground once it's transplanted and they need larger spacing. So broccoli, for example, is one plant that if you have more than two um, seedlings per cell coming up, you'll, you'll thin them back to one seed per cell or one plant per cell. And the same thing in the field, you, you need that at least that 18 inch spacing, sometimes a lot more, depending on the fertility of your soil. Let's take that tray and put it in here and we'll cover it with some vermiculite. So I just sprinkle a little bit on top, for instance, and then smooth it over so that each cell is sort of filled up. The thing about adding this is it does hold moisture so it's less likely to dry out on the surface like a lot of the flats that you noticed when you came in when I hadn't watered yet. So we'll go place it over here and uh, we can water it. The next thing we want to do is make sure we record this. Once you learn how much you need, um, what works for you, going back and having a template that guides you for the next year is, is really efficient.